Hello and welcome to another episode of All Elite Arcade. If you are watching the video format on youtube.com slash games, you know we are not in front of our green screen, which means we must both be in in, in very odd situations. Uh, I'm in a hotel room. Uh, the Chugs still having moving issues, I will say. Yes, yes, yes. I, I, I have been Uno. You know, I, I, I'm still here at uh, at the other Chugs Army HQ, yes. but I am still in the process of doing a very intense move that, honest to God, ha has been way more difficult than I thought it was going to be. But we're getting there. Yeah, we're getting. There. I mean, what you've told me <laughs> sounds like a nightmare. Um, <laughs> yeah, your stuff is not to be expected for maybe another week. Maybe I say maybe because who knows, really, right? Exactly, and I appreciate that mentality because, again, if I get my hopes up thinking, oh, it's going to show up tomorrow or the day after that, no, we're still not sure. Yeah, that's it. We're you, still not you've sure. You've already but, been disappointed a few times. At this point, we might as well just keep thinking it's going to show up further and further back. Exactly, but me and Uno, we have our fingers and toes crossed. That's right. That's right. For all the stuff to show up safely, especially because so much of this is my is my video games. Yeah, the so collection. Extra anxious. Yes. 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 The whole collection. I remember we were talking about this a few weeks ago, and this was like your biggest fear was that they'd scratch up or break your collection. Now, I know. now, I mean, on top of it will not show up soon. You have to like have that question mark for a little longer too, right? It has. Yeah. Yeah, it scared me. It, it scared me. It, it's my my pride and joy is my video game stuff. Well, um, so but it, it'll all work out. I can feel yes. it. Everyone listening on all elite arcade. I know you're sending out the positive That's vibes right. as well. But yeah, it, hopefully very, very soon all the stuff will show up and I'll be in a much different environment for the rest of this podcast. Yes, exactly. So, you won't be in front of what I, I think is a blanket. Uh <laughs> we'll see. Uh, only positive vibes here on All Eat Arcade, so we're we're we're, we're all hoping for the very best uh, on your stuff. Um, <laughs> Thank you. I know that. Uh, so because you're in the middle of the move, you have not played a whole lot of video games. Um, yeah. So, but I do know you you played a bit. So I will start because I spent the last month trying to fight Mesmer, and I can tell you now, ooh, ooh. I did it. I beat yes! I beat Mesmer. Uh, I actually, surprisingly enough, uh, on my first try back at it, I beat him. Um, no. Yeah, I, I today, uh, yesterday, I went on one of those runs where I get it, where you just like open the game and think like, oh, whatever, it doesn't matter. And then I beat six bosses in a span of like two hours. Um, what? Mesmer, I crushed. Uh, I actually ended up implementing a little bit. Orange Cassidy was talking to me about uh, his Mesmer Ooh. fight and how, like, he really invested in the fireproof armor and everything that was fireproof going in. I didn't get the armor or anything. I just ended up using that one, like, um, uh, it's like a it's like a vegetable or something that gives you fireproofing for a little bit. Oh yes, yeah, right. Uh, right. Uh, I, I think it's called something bolus or something like that. Um, so I ended up using that. I don't even know if it actually helped me, but I ended up crushing Mesmer on that one run. And I'm talking like crushing, like like I I barely got hit, which was an insane feeling because I've been getting crushed so much. Um, Dude. And then I went on this tear. Uh, uh, I beat a bunch of bears, you know, a, a lot of optional bosses that I just never thought of. I got to new areas, beat those bosses too. I don't want to to sure, devolve sure. some stuff, but there there was some rot involved. Um, I I uh, I the lion has been taken care of. That whole area has oh. been taken care of. So now I'm now I believe in the final area of the game. I don't know if. I assume it's the final area because uh, when you follow the main path, it it introduces this thing fairly early on, mm -hmm. and then if you're following the story beats, gets you back to that piece. So I'm assuming this is where yep. the big boss will be. Um, but uh, now I, now I'm in that phase where do I want to go for it or do I want to try and comb everything I've done before? Because right. I feel like. Even though I've I've I really did end up going on this tear and beating six seven bosses in one run, um, I bet you there's still a lot of stuff I haven't gone to, and so I'm I'm hopefully I'm gonna get near until I know where that boss is on that final thing, and then I think I'm gonna comb through everything afterwards. But uh, yeah, same run. 
I've been doing. Uh, I, I've been trying to switch up the weapons, but blood how uh, the, the the fang is the way to go. I just end up going to my old it's the best. my old tactic. I did mimic tier. I got the fang, and honestly, that's been that's been more successful than anything else I've tried. That 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 slash into the backflip into the the strong attack combination is by far the simplest way to to beat these things. Um, you know, I was having such a hard time that I've decided. You know what? Let's just play it the way I know how to play it, and uh, it's sure. been going well. It's been going incredibly well. Uh, I was having this really big block where I'm like, maybe they're right. Maybe this Elden Ring DLC is too hard. I disagree now. <laughs> uh, yep. Until this final boss. Everyone tells me the same thing. So we'll see once I get there. Have you beaten yes, it? I, I, I have not beaten it. I am at, uh, it, based on the um, the way this move has gone, yes. um, I actually don't even have access to play. Uh, the Elden Ring DLC, which is uh, very unfortunate yes. because I've, I've been so invested and so wrapped up um, into this playthrough as far as the Elden Ring DLC goes. But, Uno, I did want to talk about that feeling of feeling like you're going on a tear in a Soulsborne yeah. game. It is the best feeling because oh. that, that was how I felt at the very end of Dark Souls 3, the first time I played the Dark Souls 3 DLC. I got super lucky in that I, I um, beat Madeir very quickly. Mm. One of my proudest um, uh, video game moments for me was when I one-shot Gale uh, in Dark Souls 3, which is, for many people, a very big deal. Um, but yeah, that feeling when you feel like you finally kind of understood your play style and how to defeat a boss is the coolest feeling. It's really, really cool. So I'm so glad that you were able to beat Mesmer. Um, but Uno, I'm at a point now... Right, I think same thing, mm -hmm. but you may have gotten further than me, but I feel like I may be on the final area. Um, now, how much there is left, I'm not totally sure. Yeah, same. But I feel like I've cleared out quite a bit of the DLC. But I, I, I will say this. I am going to do the exact same thing. If I feel like I get to a point where this is end game and I'm not going to be able to come past this point, I do want to make sure I scrub the entire map and check everything out because um, to, to replay everything to fight an optional boss would be a, a very daunting task. For sure, for sure. <laughs> so, oh, that's true. Yeah. We actually did discuss there's a a big optional boss that's supposed to be very difficult that I have yet to oh, approach, ooh. actually, now that I think about it. So, yeah, I have to go and comb through it. Uh, there's yes. no way. I can't. Yes. My 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 brain is programmed in a way that if I haven't seen the majority of a video game, I can't finish it. And so most times I don't end fin I don't end up finishing most video games because I play every little bit of it and stretch out the yep. experience. And then eventually what happens is a bigger game comes in and shelves <laughs> that game forever. Um, we're thankfully, yeah. uh, this is a big game for game uh, or big year for game releases. There's a lot of stuff coming out, yep. but I think I bet I have about a three to four week grace period before the next big one comes out uh, in, mm probably late August, I think, because there's not a lot of huge July releases right now. Uh, so I yeah. think I'll probably be playing this Elden Ring uh, and combing through it for the next four weeks, I would think. Yeah, I, I can tell you, once I get my stuff back, oh, yeah. the, my, the, the Elden Ring DLC is going to be predominantly what I'm playing for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but Udo, I did still have a little bit of time, a little bit of time, um, to play some games. Um, and with me moving back to Pennsylvania and being close to family, uh, me and my brother are really, really close. He's the reason I'm so into video games in general. Um, but me and my brother were playing some Super Mario World ROM hacks, uh, which which was super, super fun. And there's this one ROM hack that we're playing. I wish so badly I could remember the name of it, but the concept is so cool. So Super Mario World is my favorite mario of all time mm -hmm. i think like including all of the 3d marios and the rpg marios i love the original super mario world and there are so many different rom hacks of this game and the one rom hack me and my brother were playing was like 100 levels of boss fights which is very interesting um so you'll start and it obviously it's very very simple but it gets more and more difficult and let me tell you it's addicting you have five lives to go through 100 oh. different rooms. Whoa, okay. Um, yeah, and, and defeat all these different bosses, which is so cool. The farthest I've gotten was room like 15 or 16, and my brother got as far as room 
31. Wow. Um, so, so, but it's difficult. It's really hard. Um, so we're excited to continue that. Um, at some so what point, does it do? Does it, it like it, repurpose the bosses from world or does it like bring in other sprites or what's the, what's the goal? So at least as far as what I've seen is it will start with enemies that are within the actual Super Mario World universe. Mm-hmm. Now, w- when you get up to, I don't know, level 50, level 75, level 90 and stuff like that, I'm sure there may be some new stuff that's added in. But it puts you in a very interesting, like, quick environment. For example, the first 10 maps uh, that you have as far as different worlds where you can fight these bosses they may take between five and ten seconds to to complete okay okay but then it like i said it gets more and more difficult so so far i've run into nothing but traditional super mario world enemies uh but i can only imagine because this is indeed a mod that there's going to be some wild bosses yeah um, <laughs> uh, that's always what i've mode. liked like i i like uh we talked about it off screen a little bit, but the Kaizo Mario's or like, uh, yes. um, what's it called? I am the guy. I think was uh, all these yep. like old uh, ROM repurposes that they brought in other sprites to make gigantic boss battles. Um, right. So I wouldn't be surprised if if uh, the later you get into this, uh, it'll get harder. It kind of sounds I- yeah. in a way like a a WarioWare game where you're just given short levels. Yeah. That, yes, that sounds exactly. very cool. It, it, it is. It, it literally feels like a Mario World boss rush. That's really what it feels like, which is, which is weird to imagine. Because, of course, there were boss fights in the original Super Mario World, but this one is strictly a boss rush mode um, where you have five lives to get as far as you can, and that's it. So it, it's very fun to play couch co-op uh, as well. Oh, for sure, very, yeah. Very cool. the, the, the people who moderate, uh, in general, or mod different games. Um, it's so impressive. So, so cool to see. I it, Like, that's a whole world of video games that I would say, like, a, a small sliver of the world uh, knows about. There is... Yep. So for, like, as many people have played Super Mario World, the game you've played, there might be a thousand people who have touched it, which is insane Easily. that someone has gone through so much effort for such a small audience but like some modded games are incredible they're almost as good if not better than some of the original video games they're based off of now super mario world one of the best games of all time i I don't want to start making crazy claims but like they they, there's people who mod pokemon into uh different games uh you know there's there's uh randomizers on zelda and, and metroid which i've played before it's a it's a whole world of the video game spectrum that is incredible well, and speaking of Super Mario World, again, um, we've mentioned Grand Pooh Bear before, yes. but there is a Grand Pooh World 1, 2, and 3. And all of these games are, like, so intricate. Like, Grand Pooh World 3 is literally an open-world Mario game. Really? Which is just unbelievable. Now, again, this is Kaizo difficult. Mm-hmm. So, like, you couldn't just jump in and play this. For example, I'm convinced I could not beat the first level. Um, but it's so cool to see how artistic everyone gets with, again, uh, Barb is the person who made Grand Pooh World 3 for Grand Pooh Bear. It's amazing. It's it's so, so cool to watch. I also like the, uh, Nintendo invested in that ideology by, like, making Super Mario Maker and Mario Maker 2. Yes. And, like, yes. I'm sure to some extent we'll make more Maker games in the future, like a Zelda Maker and a, and a, a Metroid Maker. Because that seems like the... If you're going to jump to a next phase of what those games are, letting me make my own Metroidvania or my own top-down Zelda game seems like an incredible feat, but also exactly what I think would be the future of those games. I I completely agree. I I mean, uh, the big reason I bought a Wii U um, was because of Super Mario Bros. Oh, me too. Just from watching people play it, I'm like, this looks so fun, so amazing. I'm not very good at making levels. Uh, but I, I love to see what people create, and I love to play other levels that people create. Mm. Mar- Mario Maker was such a cool decision by Nintendo to get to give the audience the freedom to kind of create their own world. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I've also been traveling for a little bit, and so uh, uh, on top of playing, uh, I, I'm traveling with my PlayStation, which is a uh, kind oh, of iffy. Nice. I hate doing it oh. because sometimes I feel that they're going to break it any a little further. 
It has no shell left. I get your pain. Yes. I get your pain. Yeah, yes, you understand. <laughs> um, so my PlayStation has no shell left. It's still working fine. But I, I ended up bringing my Steam Deck as well. Uh, there was a game that came out this week from Devolver Digital called Angerfoot, um, which is like a first-person shooter. But uh, what you're supposed to do is try and beat each level as quickly as humanly possible. And okay. its main mechanic is that you can kick forward. You know, like that's... that's uh, uh, that's why it's called anger foot. It's that when you don't have a gun, you can kick a guy in the face, the gun flies in the air, you get the gun and you continue running forward. Um, it's been neat. I played about an hour and a half. Um, I would like to give you more opinion on it, but unfortunately what happened is my steam deck died. It's, I, so I, I didn't know this was a, a common thing, but it's been black screened of death, which is the term they're using on steam. And what happens is that I, I close down after a game, never thought twice. Now, when it boots up, it will it will boot the logo, but then it will flicker a black screen continuously until the battery dies. Nothing happens. No. So now I, I've been trying to find uh, ways to fix it. Uh, it does not seem to be going well. Um, this might be the death of my Steam Deck. Uh, I either oh. have to send it in to RMA to get it fixed, or... And this is strictly because I, I see an opportunity here. I might have to go get the new OLED um, to continue, oh. which it it sucks. I, lo I, I lose this Steam Deck, but I did kind of want this yes. OLED. Um, it's unfortunate. It sucks, especially I've got a, another week here in travel. We're in Texas for the week. Uh, we, we have a residency yeah. for Collision. And uh, yeah, it's... Uh, uh, I salute you, Steam Deck. You you gave me a lot of hours, and I hope I could find a way to fix you. But if not, I'm I'm just gonna buy a new version of you. Well, Uno, I I will tell you, I have heard across the board that for people who have sent in Steam Decks that are not doing well, yeah. I guess Valve has done an incredible job of of fixing yeah. people with those issues. But I will say, Uno, I do have the Steam Deck OLED. It's worth it. Yes, I. It is so worth it, man. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, the beautiful <laughs> screen I heard, and then on top of that, like it also yeah. has a better battery life, which I think uh, it does. That is immense for me because I've played. We have flights that are sometimes I'll have a six-hour flight, and I can play yeah. an hour and a half of a of, of a high-end video game, and uh, so yeah, I would even if I could double that or even add one single hour to it. Uh, I that would be an immense leap for me for these long trips, so maybe by next week you'll you'll find out I have an OLED. We'll find out very shortly because uh, I'm I'm going stir crazy without it right now. So, oh, I bet I bet you are. But yeah, it's uh, I, I will say as someone who has a Steam Deck OLED, the battery life is better, um, the frame rate is better. Mm -hmm. um, it it is a very very nice handheld. Definitely, definitely an upgrade. Yeah, definitely and it's got that sweet new case with it too. I, I saw that. Yeah. yeah, that that's. There's a lot of pros to purchasing another one. Uh, I might yes. still get this one fixed and still buy an OLED. That way, I have a backup. I think you should. You know, why not? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Um. Hey, we'll be back right after this, talking some news. See you soon. And we're back. It's our portion where we talk the news of the week because there is no week in the world where video game does not drop some form of news. There's so much video games that come out. Uh, uh, and, and, so much. And we touch, you know, I feel like you and I play a lot of video games, but we touch so little of what happens every single week because there is so much going on at all times. So much. It's an insane world, uh, uh, and uh, it only goes by quicker. Uh, first little piece of right. news this week. Uh, it's been announced Splitgate 2 will be coming out in 2025, and the developers uh, uh, have a big promise saying it, it will be revolutionary step forward in competitive shooters. Um, have you played Splitgate before? I have. I have. I played a fair amount of Splitgate, and I will say it's an absolute blast. Oh, it rules. Again, it... it, it it really does. It takes such a different feel of the first person shooter, but at the same time, I really do mean this. It, it feels 
close to Halo for me. Yes. Just with with being able to teleport around, obviously. Mm -hmm. But, like, I love the feel of Halo in general on first-person shooters. Obviously, Splitgate is its own thing with the ability to, uh, like, move around the map super quickly. But, yeah, Splitgate is awesome. An absolute blast to play. Yeah, if you haven't had the chance, it's on Xbox. It's free to play. A lot yeah. of people... Uh, have, free to play. Have de I've uh, described it as Halo with portals. You know, Halo already there had portals to begin with, but this one is, like, very heavy on the portal uh, uh, situation. It runs yes. incredible, and, and almost to some extent, you wonder why people haven't invested more in portals before in a shooter game. Yeah. Because uh, this one, it, it makes... It makes the pace of the game becomes very quick because Halo is a quick pace to begin with. You add the portals yes. to it. Great, uh, all, all kinds of great uh, uh, movement mechanics in the video game as well. Um, so very excited for the next one. I assume will be free as well, but I don't think it's been disclosed if not. Uh, but uh, they have said it will be uh, redesigned from the ground up in Unreal Engine uh, 5. So it will be up to date Ooh. up to that point. And a lot of what they're saying... It, uh, I don't know what their revolutionary part is going to be. Uh, they haven't talked about yeah. what will be new about the gameplay. But it will have a companion app on mobile. So as you play, you will get collectibles, in-game rewards, and a bunch of lore designed in a digital comic series on your phone as, you, as you're playing. So that's I, I, I like companion that. apps a lot. Uh, I think those are really neat. Uh, and and not a lot of video games have them. I remember um, Watch Dogs had one at one point yeah. where you could look people's information and you could do your hacks through your phones. Uh, and I thought like, oh, this is like this is. I always think about like what's what's the further extension to video games? Like where can we go next? And like having dual experiences with your video games, I think is really interesting. Um, so I, I'm wondering uh, if that is what they they envision as the future of of competitive shooters, or is there something they're not disclosing to us yet? And uh, and they're maybe they have something in a in their back pocket that's even more incredible. Yeah, which is also very possible. Um, but but I do love the idea too of with this companion app, you getting more lore of the world. Mm -hmm. Like like again, I I've always been a. Uh, anyone who watches my my Twitch streams knows that I love some juicy, juicy lore. Oh, yes. So anytime we get any more of that, it's really cool. And again, the Splitgate universe is fascinating. It's fun to play. Uh, no question to me, Splitgate Two is going to be an absolute blast. But Uno, I'm with you. Is when they when they're talking about revolutionizing. I'm curious what exactly that means. So, but we'll see. Yeah, I guess we'll see. Uh, 2025 is when it'll be releasing. Like as I said, we don't know yeah. if it'll be free to play or if it'll actually be a purchase game either way uh, uh when i did play a uh, split gate originally i was very surprised that that was a free offering because it was that good of a game yeah. um so Agreed. i will definitely be checking out what 1047 is making that is the developer uh and we'll be checking it out next year for sure um another piece of news uh, uh congratulations to ea sports because ea sports just dropped uh college football 25 for a hundred dollars in early access, and it's been an immense success. Uh, so there hasn't been a, a, a EA Sports college football game in quite some time. I know this because Eddie Kingston uh, talked to me <laughs> an immense amount about how excited he was about this. And uh, they have 2.2 million players in early access, which is huge. Uh, and they've already made their money, and it's already considered a hit before it was even released. Um that's well first of all the hundred dollar version for video games so that you can play it three dollars early or three days early yeah. is something i'm of two minds of i think it's kind of wild to charge someone for that but it's also a pre-order where you get other bundles of stuff so you are sure. you are getting pieces that no one else is doing but obviously it's working because people are really, really enjoying it right Right. I, I, I can't tell you how many people I have spoken to um, who, well, I don't know, I find out that they really, really love video games and specifically love sports games, like like things like Madden and FIFA. So many people have said, I can't wait for a new college football video mm -hmm. game. So the fact that it's finally here, people are putting 
their money where their mouth is. Uh, clearly, we're seeing that right now with the success of uh, so early on with this new college football game. So, yeah, uh, people want this bad, and people are going to play it. Oh, like crazy. And give you a little bit of some stats. Um, when, when, uh, when it was only in early access, there was 700,000 players online concurrently, which is an insane amount. Um, yeah, on Xbox. So these these are our numbers uh, for the week that it came out. It was ranked number three in U.S. US daily active users on Xbox, only behind Call of Duty and Fortnite, which of course makes sense. Uh, and on PlayStation yeah. Five, it was behind Call of Duty, Fortnite, and Grand Theft Auto Five during its early access period. So this is only when it was early access. That's how immense of a user base uh, ended up getting this. And anyone that uh, so we're not. I mean, I, I think we could both admit we're not necessarily sports game guys. Um, yes, that is true. I, yeah, not against them. No, not at all. Like, and I, I dabble in general, all of them. Generally, uh, I'll jump into yep, an NHL. I'll jump into a Madden. I'll jump into an ABA. Same. But FIFA. I, but I'm not. Mm-hmm. This is not my game every year. Um, yes. For a lot of people, this is it. You know, like yep. Madden is typically their 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 source of uh, football and. From a lot, a lot of the people that have played regularly on Madden who have already jumped into this, they've told me this is actually what they've been wanting this whole time. You know, oh, like that awesome. the Madden games have kind of deteriorated and kind of been incremental and, and not felt like much of a, a leap. Whereas this has felt like okay, this is this is the game I've been waiting for the whole time. So it's been a success, um, obviously financially, and it's been a, it seems to be successful on top as far as critically. Um, Probably going to be how all sports games come out in future, though. I, I think that's kind of been the EA has done this for all of their sports games. I know NHL, you could have yeah. come, you could come in early as well, um, and I'm sure it, it will continue for all of their games in the future. Another little piece of tidbit in this: just be, this is it does not talk about the success of the video game, but just so everyone understands, uh, according to multiple reports, the players that were in the video game of the the EA Sports College uh, football game, were given a minimum of $600 for their image. Uh, They all received a free copy, and there is about 14,000 people in the video game. So there's 85 players per team. So there's 14,000 people who have made at least $600. It was said there was over $8.4 million given for likenesses and for uh, uh, using of their image, which is wow. insane when you think about just the 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 reach of, of players on the college level. Uh, and, the scale of that, yes, the, the scale. scale, and like to get every, fourteen thousand people. That's an insane amount of people to try and uh, 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 represent in one video game, right? Oh my goodness, that's unreal. So if you get your chance, go to EA, uh, get that EA Sports game. Uh, like we, like I said, I'm not, I won't be getting it. Uh, but that is just not my type of game. But uh, very, very happy for anyone who has uh, uh, been waiting a very long time for a Absolutely. new version of that. Yeah. Um, we have uh, we have found out recently Star Wars Outlaw had went gold or platinum. They are ready to press to disc. Uh, it will mm. be coming out, I believe, late August. Right? Is what we uh, third week yes. of August, I believe. Well, uh, mm-hmm. they dropped a 10-minute teaser gameplay that has unfortunately not been met very well uh, because people saw a bunch of stuttering in it, a bunch of uh, pop-outs, a lot, a lot of technical, uh, graphical def- difficulties. And so a lot of uh, fans were, were telling Ubisoft that they should delay. Well, Ubisoft has shot down uh, uh, the idea of delaying uh, Star Wars Outlaws over widespread graphics complaints saying that the level of quality of the world and the experience is really, really high and that they will be optimizing it by the time of release. Uh, they also said mm. to quell uh, some of those fears, they will be releasing other areas uh, uh, very soon and more gameplay footage to showcase that it will, it is improving. Um, you know, because yeah. they they have, they went to disc almost two months before their release. That day one patch is probably going to be immense to try and optimize yes. it for sure. Um, right. I'm still excited. I think uh, I think a 10 minute gameplay video two three months before release has plenty of time to iron out some of the stuff. Um, I also don't know if I'll play it week one. 
Uh, I, I've, I've started pushing back on certain games that I know might need a, a, a you know a uh, an update or two. And so I sure. think Outlaws it is a big game, uh, big open world game, very graphically heavy because Star Wars, of course. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if by second patch they kind of iron out all that stuff. Um, but still excited. I'm still very excited for the game. I agree. I, I, I think, and I stand by this, I think it has the potential to be game of the year mm-hmm. if, if it really does um, um, fill in all the things that people are really excited for as far as an open world Star Wars game goes. And, and to me, I do think it's very telling that Ubisoft stood its ground and was like, hey, nope. Don't worry. Everything's going to be okay, Um, especially considering people were concerned about some stuff graphically. So I think they know that their game, whether or not it's with a day one patch, you know, I agree with you. There probably will be a a significant day one patch based on the releasing of the game. Um, But clearly they're confident enough to say, hey, we are going to release our game on this day and we're going to have this day one patch and everyone's going to be really happy with it. So uh, I'm excited to see. I'm, I'm very, very excited to see what this game turns into. Um, especially because it is a game that I will I will be playing week of. Yeah, and, sure. and it's it's one of the, if not... Well, I'd say it's in the top three releases for this year as far as like most anticipated. Uh, the Star yeah. Wars user base yeah. is insane. The fan base is, is yes. so gigantic. And plus, it's the game that for a very, very long time people have been waiting for. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, yeah. I, I think it'll be good. I'm not too... Me too. If you, not that Ubisoft has the greatest track record, but if, if they're... If they're they seem confident ahead of time, they had a chance to delay this too. If they don't think yeah. they should delay it and they aren't, maybe we should trust them. But to be seen, to be seen. Yes, to be determined. But but I'm I, Uno. I'm of your exact same thought process. Yes, I'm of the exact same thought. Yeah. Uh, last week we talked about a teaser trailer dropping from Nintendo, a, a Nintendo first party game uh, tease called Emio. Uh, Emio the Smiling Man. Well, we just got more information about it this week. It is not its own standalone game. It's actually a sequel uh, to a series of video games that were for the Famicom. The Famicom Detective Club series. Uh, The games are are, are over 30 years old. They're point-and-click games of the horror nature, where essentially you solve a a case and, and, and a movie plays in a bit uh, throughout it as it, it, if you played a point and click game you kind of have an understanding how these things would work well it was re-released these first two games in 2021 for the switch uh i guess the uh those sold so well uh that the developers decided to make a sequel to it and that is what emio the smiling man the te- the game they teased was last week it will be a new uh video game in that series essentially a point and click horror game a new story uh, this is the first new entry in 35 years in this series, so that is an immense. I don't know. That might be the longest any the longest for a sequel ever. Maybe I mean, it, it may be. I, I can't think of one. I can't think of that another one that would be that long time so long. between. Yeah. <laughs> um, the series producer is Yoshio Sakamoto, who wrote the first two games and then went on to direct Super Metroid, Metroid Zero Mission. Uh, so he of uh, a great critically uh, great critical acclaim for sure, uh, and the video essentially is them talking about what the story is going to be about. You can go and check it out uh, online right now. Uh, but it's a um, it it's essentially it resolves around a string of murders uh, that happened about 18 years ago, which was an urban legend uh, called the Smiling Man. And uh, you will uh, assume the role of a private investigator and try to solve and stop the killer. That will be uh, coming out actually next month, end of August. Meo is coming out on the Switch consoles. So there you have it. We had a big question mark last week. We were so excited to find out more what we just did. Um, I did not play those other Famicom series games. I actually remember when the remake of both of them came out uh, and I wanted to if there's a bundle of all of them, this might be something I jump into because I'm, I'm a big point and click guy and I love a uh, detective mystery for sure. I actually have very little experience with point and click games, um, but it is a genre I would love to jump into more. Mm-hmm. Um, for example, the remake of 
um, Return to Monkey Island yes. was a game yes. uh, that I got on my, on my Steam Deck, which I still have not finished. But even another game like Maniac Mansion, which I know is way, way back in the day. Well worth doing, uh, though. But well worth doing. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that was a game that I had played a little bit of. But jumping into this uh, with this idea from Nintendo, and like you said, Uno, if there's like a, a collection or a package of these games, oh my goodness, let me jump right in. That sounds awesome. Yeah, again, three different stories from a, a Nintendo first yep. party. And, like, you don't get a lot of horror on Nintendo, so I'm very curious to see what this no. new one will be all about. Um, that is coming out August 29th on Switch. And, uh, like I said, if there, hopefully there's a bundle. I, would, I wouldn't I would be very yeah. surprised if they didn't somehow bundle all three together. Um, yeah. It's a whole series, so why not? Uh, and then our final piece of news for this week. This one, unfortunately, will make you sad. Paramount Plus has decided to cancel Halo after its second season. Uh, Halo uh, 1 was met with kind of middling reviews, about like 70% across Rotten Tomato. Yep. But season 2 was actually met with very high praise. Uh, a lot of people were super into Halo season 2. But unfortunately, it would seem it's yeah. canceled mostly because... Uh, the cost of those series were higher than Fallout was, whereas Fallout has brought back a lot more revenue and more critical acclaim and more attention. And I'm not, I'm not sure yeah. if the comparison is what got season three canceled of Halo, but uh, in a lot of ways, metrics will always dictate decisions from people higher up. And so it's unfortunate. Uh, you ended up watching both of those though, right? I, I did. I, I watched both uh, both seasons, but Uno, uh, going off of what you said, it's it's definitely disappointing um, because as anyone who listens to this show or anyone who knows me, Uno, you know this, I love Halo dearly. Um, the Halo franchise is one of, if not my favorite franchises in all of gaming um, or just one of my favorite franchises in general, uh, regardless of gaming. Uh, so when this TV show started, I was I was super, super excited. And truth be told, when I did watch the first season, I enjoyed it, but it but it didn't like blow me yeah. away or anything. And th and then I watched season two, and I was like, oh my god, this is it. This is exactly what the Halo show needs. I, I still to this day stand by this. If you have not seen, whether you've seen season one or not, watch season two of the Halo show. Uh, to me, I think it's an excellent series. Really, really good. Um, and it also leaves you in a position or situation where you're very excited for a season three. Yeah. Um, so I, I was definitely disappointed to hear that there was going to be no season three. Of course, again, I don't know metric wise or um, financially the situation between a show like Fallout or a show like Halo. Um, but Halo really started to find its footing and find its ground in its television series to me in season two. Mm -hmm. Um but so this is this is certainly a bummer for me. Well, this is certainly a bummer. I have some good news for it. So unfortunately, Paramount Plus has canceled it. But Xbox and 343 Industries have publicly said that they are still looking to find a new partner in hopes of continuing the series uh, oh, because they still think they, they they think they have something there. Uh, and I agree. In the climate that we have now, there's so much other. You know, we have Netflix, we've got Hulu's, we've got Disney Pluses, we've got so on and so forth. There is probably a a, a future for this series elsewhere. Uh, uh, HBO Max, you, you get the you get the drill. There's so much out there. Apple Plus. Yeah, uh, I could keep going. Um, but uh, do you? Uh, I I hope there's a future for the Halo TV show. But do you think this is good or bad news for like all the the future stuff that's supposed to come out? You know, we still have Last of Us season two. We've got more Fallout. Uh, we have that Twisted Metal show that's supposed to get another season as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Arcane has some stuff. I don't. I don't think this is exemplary of what video game format shows are going to get, uh, because I think it, 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 all in all, it will all bank on a couple. If Last of Us and Fallout keep doing well, I think we're going to keep getting series for sure. Um, I just think Halo is an ins an insanely large brand, but. Yep. Also, simultaneously, I don't think that many people were vying to look uh, up a TV show for it. I think that's part of what I, the I, issue is, right? I, I do agree. I, I think that is fair, um, it, especially when you look at the people who watched the Last of Us TV show yes. or people who watched the, the Fallout TV show. I do feel like generally, at least in my little bubble, 
that more people were talking about shows like The Last of Us yes. and shows like Fallout than they were Halo. And, and that's not a knock whatsoever on Halo, but I do agree. I think that adaptation, I, I don't know what it was exactly. I don't know if it was the advertising or just in general the success of the show mm. that more people were discussing it. Um, but I do feel like there is a place for the Halo TV show. Um, because again, I, I'm so excited to hear that Xbox and Microsoft are looking to maybe find another platform to to make this season three, because season two, like I said, they really found their footing. But but again, to generally answer your question, Uno, I completely agree, no. I, I don't think this is gonna affect video game adaptation TV shows whatsoever, considering at this point, shows like uh, the Last of Us and shows like Fallout are regarded as not the best video game TV shows. They're the best TV shows. Oh, yeah. Like th these are critically acclaimed shows that thousands and thousands of people are watching. So I really do hope that Halo gets to to rejoin these shows and kind of showcase what the Halo universe is all about. Yeah, and also like a percentage of this might be an issue with their platforms as well. You know, like Amazon Prime mm. is, is in more homes than Paramount Plus. Uh, and yes, and Fallout yes. is part of HBO, which has like a, a I I think a larger user base than Paramount, but not by much. But is more like critically acclaimed for those TV shows, whereas Paramount is You're more right. for like live TV and kind of like sitcoms and stuff. Whereas HBO is like known for large productions and 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 high high gamut uh, TV shows. So. It could be yes. a situation where this falls on another one of these platforms and Halo does get the attention that it needs as well. Um, to right. be seen. I, I hope they make more. Yeah. Uh, I know uh, Halo I is a to. huge uh, fan base and a lot of people would mm -hmm. like to, especially because, as you said, Halo Season 2 is is so highly regarded now. It would be a shame yes. not to yeah. get Season 3. Um, we will see, though. We will see for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that is it for the uh, news of the week, but that's not all for our podcast because we have your questions from the community ma mailbag right after this. And we're back. If you are not watching, you can watch us uh, physically. We're actually on video if you're listening to the audio format at youtube.com slash AEW games. Get your comments down below. Now, we're going to go to our community mailbag. If you did not know, we answer your questions, our faithful fans. All you need to go is to go to tbs.com slash arcade mailbag, tbs.com slash arcade mailbag to send your questions, and we will answer it in our third segment of the show, the community mailbag. Today, we actually have four questions. Uh, uh, thank you so much to all of you for still sending out your questions. It helps us immensely, and plus, we just love discussing video game stuff so please continue doing so uh our first question comes from terry here we go uno and chugs love you guys have you ever we dominated you. a single player or story mode of a particular game to the point that it gets you confident and then you try playing online and you absolutely get squash i had my ego deflated 99 percent in elden rings coliseum mode despite having over 400 hours playtime. And don't even get me started on Mortal Kombat 1. I get my cheeks slapped every time I load up multiplayer despite me blasting through the story and invasion modes. Thank you, Terry, for your question. A hundred percent. I don't think there's 100%. a video game I've played where I go online and feel good. Because well, go ahead, I was going to say, yeah. I, I, Red Dead Redemption was one where I would I would get oh. so good at the the single player and think like oh yeah I can I could do it all and then I would go online and get decimated. Uh, Grand <laughs> Theft Auto Five, same idea. Um, Elden Ring, I didn't even tr I didn't even I did like maybe one or two invasions because you had to do it for a certain string of stories, and I know for a fact I couldn't do it. Every time I would go to invade someone, I would get decimated. Um, <laughs> Call of Duty was one that I would always have those experiences. I was huge into the story modes of Call of Duty. Always wanted to try out the, the multiplayer games. Every first-person shooter I've ever played multiplayer, I get decimated. Doom was the same way uh, when they came out with the Doom uh, 2016 maps. I don't think... I, I think... I, I never claim I'm a good video game player, like I'm actually talented or not, uh, but 
I think I'm middling because once I go online, I'm I'm very easily humbled by people who actually try to play. Um, with the sole exception of maybe Fortnite, every other game Ooh. I get decimated online. <laughs> it, it it's so true in regards to playing a video game and thinking like like the the single player experience and the multiplayer experience are two completely different things. Like the one that freshly comes into my mind is Halo. Like I I have gone through and I have played and beaten every single Halo solo on the legendary difficulty, which is the hardest difficulty you can possibly do in the game. It completely changes it. Like Halo 2 Legendary is unbelievable with the Jackal Snipers. For people who have played it, they know exactly what I'm talking about. It is so difficult and so unbelievably hard. But then I'll go on multiplayer and think, oh, I'm going to do okay, and just get annihilated. So yeah, the the big one for me is Halo for sure, where I I have played through all the single-player experiences, done the toughest challenges, the toughest difficulty, and then I'll go online and and I'll get smoked, and I'll get smoked. So yeah, that's a great question. (laughs) It seems uh, it's pretty universal. I think most people, unless you dedicate yourself to an online mode, the the move from one to the other, you get decimated. It it has... And, yeah. like, yeah. shooters and fighters especially. I think you can play oh, a sports yeah. game and go online, and it's it's kind of a variety. I would play NHL, and it was, like, mm-hmm. sometimes online you do well, sometimes you don't. Yeah. When it comes to fighting games and it comes to shooters, you're almost guaranteed that if you did not spend a considerable amount of time strictly on the multiplayer, you're getting crushed. Uh, yeah. and we're, uh, both of you and I have already admitted we're not online players. Mostly we're really into the story right. and we're really into the single players. So yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it's a Terry. Don't worry. We're just like you. Uh, yeah, it, just like you. Terry. A lot of yeah. us. There's a lot of us <laughs> out there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you very much for your question. This yes. one comes from thank Das T L D A S T I E L. I hope I did not butcher your name. Uh, huge fan of the pod. Chugs knows me as Dasty on Twitch. Dasty, what's up, man? There. My question is, have you raged during a video game? And if so, how do you rage? Do you throw something or just quit the video game? Would love to know your answer. I very rarely rage at a video game. Me. I am, uh, I think, I think we have such a positive outlook on things that people assume like oh maybe behind closed doors they get real mad i almost the closest i'll get mad is probably an elden ring and Mm. most of it is just like disappointment it's not even mad as much as i wish i could do better i'll get destroyed by mesmer and i'll be like ah there's that line again that he keeps saying about about mesmer's flame for christ's sakes but otherwise (laughs) Otherwise, like I'm not throwing stuff. I don't. I don't yell. I don't swear. Um, I. I am. I will say I get more pumped and more mad and more agitated when I win. When I finally get mm. it, then you might see me get up and like start grunting and like. I won't throw anything, but I'm definitely gonna fist pump for sure. Um, <laughs> so no, I. I am. A, I'm not a very angry person, and so very rarely do I get angry when I play a video game. And, and same thing, me and Uno have discussed this before, but as far as raging goes, to, to me, and Uno, I think you would agree, but video games in general are so much fun uh, that just the chance to play them, even when I lose uh, over and over and over again, I, I'm still having such a good time, such a good mm-hmm. time. But but the one time I think where I started to get a little frustrated was Hollow Knight is one of my favorite games of all time. Um, and I remember I was streaming the fourth Pantheon, um, which was incredibly difficult for me. I think it took me, God, like six hours total on stream, uh, where I was just playing this same section over and over and over again. And it wasn't even really a rage. It was like a disappointment of feeling like I was letting the chat down uh, that actually happened, where I was like, oh, my God, I keep dying at the same spot. Uh, but, but no, I never feel a need to like break anything or throw anything or turn a game off um but there have definitely been times where my heart rate has exceeded because i really want to beat something so so bad especially when other people are watching yeah um i've been quietly mad for sure 
you know like yes, where yes. where right. i have no outburst but deep down something is building in me but yeah but i i'm not i'm not an outwardly uh, come on be better be better that's right yeah. especially when streaming when there's eyes on you yes. it definitely does change like my outlook on video games because it makes me feel like sure. i'm i'm not meeting up to what people want to see from me right. um right <laughs> which not not that anyone's like oh the the yeah i i'm looking for like top gear top tier video game playing from these people but Sure. I want. I still want to do well when those things. Happen. You do. You yeah. You want. You want to do well. You want to do well. But um. Yeah. I, I think both of our channels are the same in that. Um. Yeah. Very little rage. Um. If ever happens, uh, just because we're having such a good yeah. time playing these these awesome games we want to play. Uh. Thank you, Dasty, for your question. Uh. Hopefully, yeah. uh. That was uh, satisfactory to you. You just you just asked the two nicest yeah. people in video games. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> of course, we don't get mad. <laughs> Um, <laughs> uh, this third question comes from Hunter. Greetings, Uno and Chugs. I've been enjoying some games you've all recommended or recommended lately, including Ooh. Ender Lilies, which was a fa- which has a fantastic atmosphere, and Vampire Survivors, which is very difficult to put down. Yes, it is very addictive. I may have yes, a problem, he says. Uh, my question <laughs> involves the Chugs and his love of Halo. Has Chugs mm. played the marathon games? Marathon is a bungee first-person shooter series prior to Halo. Most of them were Mac exclusive in a time when that was very unusual. Like Halo, it's a sci-fi first-person shooter, but much more violent and with darker atmosphere. The writing in the game was very good with deep lore and a story at a time when FPS games typically did not have a plot other than if it's alive, kill it. The multiplayer for them was also extremely chaotic and fun. The first two recently just got released, for free on Steam with the third and final game coming out soon. If you play these, you'll start to notice little nods to Marathon in the Halo series themselves. I play them a lot growing up, and they have a special place in my heart. If you are familiar with them, what are your thoughts? I will start. I have no idea what these games are. Ooh, okay. So such a great question. And truth be told, Uno, I have never played the Marathon games either, but I am very aware of them. Mm. Uh, again, because Halo is one of my favorite franchises of all time. So I know that Marathon was kind of the start or the precursor before we jumped into the Halo franchise uh, from the amazing developer Bungie. Um, but I, I have not played the Marathon games either. But the fact or, or knowing that these games are being re-released now mm-hmm. has me very excited. And for free. Like, I, I, I and for free, exactly. So, um, unfortunately, I've not played the Marathon games, but the, the fact that I know this, I, I truth be told, did not know that these games were being re-released and for free. So, I can tell you right now, I will be playing them, and I will give my opinion on them very, very soon. Uh, that That's a game series I've been meaning to play forever. So, because, um, again, Bungie and Halo... Are, are incredibly important to me. So that's awesome. That's so good to know. That was like a great piece of information for me to find. Yes, thank you so, so. much, uh, Hunter. You're, you're, you're now yeah. pretty much influencing what we're going to play in the next few weeks. For sure, 100%. I'm definitely playing it. Yeah, for sure. Well, if you did not know about that series, uh, Marathon is free on Steam right now, the first and second one. Thank you again to Hunter. Um, our final question today is from Blessed Ryu. Yo, Uno and Chugs, really enjoyed the challenge you guys issued each other to play games you normally wouldn't play, especially as a huge fan of The Witness. Five of my friends in my Discord group were inspired to do the same thing, and it's been an absolute hit. Yeah. Oh, Our influence nice. grows. Uh, although, yes. we did make a rule that the de- the game can't be more than $10 on Steam. Good rule. Good rule. Mm, yeah, good rule. Uh, we pre-select genres we normally wouldn't be interested in and then we put our names in a randomizer to see who we are paired with i'm not someone who normally gravitates towards rpgs but i was recommended undertale Woo! and man i can't believe i almost missed out on this gem as for my question do you guys plan to continue choosing games for each other that you normally wouldn't play definitely looking forward to more of your takes thank you bless right now i want to start by saying if you had never played Undertale and that was what you got ended up <laughs> as a recommendation, you're eating good because that is a heck you're of a game. You're going to love this game. Yeah, you are going to love oh this my God. game of friends recommending games you haven't played because Undertale is so good. It's so good. So uh, good. Right, right up there. Uh, probably one of the best independent games ever created. So Easy. congratulations. Easy. You, you're playing a really, a really good one. Um, 
to answer your question, yes. Uh, right now, yeah. we're both in weird situations where we can't really do game recommendations. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but the Chugs uh, has no video game thing of at all right now. Um, it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. heartbreaking. Uh, <laughs> uh, we're just we're just hoping. We're just hoping. But yes, we do want to bring it back. Uh, I have a ton of recommendations I want to give to Chugs, and I know Chugs has a ton to yeah. myself as well. Uh, and I want to yes. jump into some weirder stuff and some random stuff as well. Um, but at this very moment, we can't make any promises of our next one because neither of us have access to our usual stuff. My Steam Deck's done, so unless it's on PlayStation for the next two weeks, um, I don't think I'll be playing much else than uh, Elden Ring. And unfortunately for Chugs, he's not playing a whole lot of anything right now. A whole, whole bunch of nothing. Yeah. Uh, it, but, but based off of that question, though, again, that was one of my favorite things about not only talking to friends who also love video games, but one of my favorite things about streaming was meeting all these different people who recommend different games for me to try. Or maybe I'm playing a game that uh, people in the chat have not heard of or my friends haven't heard of, and we all discover these different games that, again, we maybe never would have played. Mm -hmm. It's one of my favorite things in the world to do because Uno has recommended multiple games to me that i've just absolutely adored people in my chat have done the same thing and then i know i i've played some games that people haven't heard of or i've told my friends uh, as well so that whole process of discovering a video game that you maybe normally wouldn't have tried is one of my absolute favorite things so going off of what your question is and going off of what uno said yes we are going to continuously recommend to each other uh different games to try different games to play um, and I'm so glad again, I, not to rehash this, but I'm so glad you're trying Undertale. It, it's one of the best indie games oh, yeah. ever made easily. Oh yeah. I, I, I wish I could go back and play that without knowing anything about it because it, it is a, an incredible experience. Um, as for like, much like Chugs, one of my favorite things is when a friend tells me to play a video game and I've heard nothing about it. That's yep. like uh, one of my favorite experiences other than video games is, is seeing a movie I know nothing about and just being completely blindsided by what it's about. Um, yep. I, I love like mid-year uh, uh, review points and end of year game of the year lists for the same reason. I'll go see my friends lists. They'll list things I might not necessarily be into and based solely on the strength of, of their recommendation, I'll be like, okay, fine. I'm not an RTS guy, but I'll give this a try. And almost always I end up finding a new appreciation for, for a series or, or finding a gem that I would never have found before. So we will definitely be doing that in the future. Um, probably a few weeks from now, once, once uh, we, we both have a hands on all of our consoles. Uh, and yes, yeah. and I'm glad it's actually been influencing your group of friends. Uh, our, yeah, that's amazing. Our, our yeah. influence grows, which I, I, I'm, I'm uh, immensely happy about because uh, uh, that's what we do it for. For the love of the video games yeah. and uh, to have other people in the world of video games be influenced by, uh, by our, uh, our opinions as well. Uh, so thank you so much yeah. uh, to Blessed Ryu for the question. If you've got video game recommendations, let me go see them. Oh, go to YouTube.com slash AW Games uh, and let us know your video game uh, recommendations for this year. And you know what? If they're off the beaten path, even better because that's the ones I'm looking for. I'm not, you know, yep. you can re if you recommend Elden Ring DLC. Well, guess what? We've been playing that. But if you recommend <laughs> something uh, completely left field, I actually have a short list. I can't off the top of the head uh, remember it. But like, Chance of Sonar is one that I played recently uh, in the last Ooh. eight months that very little people have played. Uh, I would recommend that to a lot of puzzle people out there if you haven't played Chance of Scenario. If you've got something small or you've got something off the beaten path of video games and uh, you think it's good, let us know in the comments down below, youtube.com slash AEW games. Um, that'll be it for this week for the uh, uh, All Elite Arcade podcast. We will be back next week, every single week, talking the biggest news in video games and telling you exactly what we're up to uh, uh, when we're playing video games. Chugs, where can they, well, can they find you? Well, generally speaking, yeah, you can find me at twitch.tv slash the Chugs. Uh, it's been a few weeks now. Uh, this, Like I said, this move has been something else. 
Uh, but I will stay as active as possible. The second I'm able to stream, I'm hoping later this week, actually, uh, I'll be I'll be back on stream. So stay tuned for that. I got to finish up the Elden Ring DLC. Fingers and toes crossed. But uh, yeah, generally, that's where you can find me. Well, uh, you can find me Evil Uno everywhere. I still have not Twitch streamed in a, in a while, but I am. I have a PlayStation. I'm I might do it this week. I actually brought all my stuff yeah. to do it. Uh, I'm in a Ooh. hotel room for a long time. So twitch.tv slash evil uno. Give it a follow. We I might finally get there. Maybe it maybe I'll try to beat that the end of Elden Ring uh, on stream. Oh, do that it. would be that would oh, be the be one. Great. That'd be the one. I keep saying it every week, but uh that might be the <laughs> one. Uh, anyway, we'll be back next week. More all elite arcade right here. See you guys next time.